Hey everyone, my name is Sean Arnold and before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to make a quick announcement for you all. I've recently invested heavily into a brand new live streaming setup. I have a brand new internet connection with much higher speeds. I have a brand new streaming layout and I also have a new microphone on the way as we speak. My goal behind this is if I'm able to stream more often and save more time on producing content, I'll be able to produce more content overall on a more regular basis. My YouTube channel will stay the same. I will be still doing the Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist online rank series. I just hope to be uploaded more often and more frequently. By streaming more often, I also hope to create complementary series such as deck testing streams where I do my deck testing as I'm streaming live and hopefully take feedback from others that want to provide their expertise and their knowledge into how to improve my builds. Also, I hope to bring my oldest shows such as Death Bros, which was a podcast style series where myself and other jewelers will get online onto a microphone, play a couple of games with each other and discuss what news is happening in the Yu-Gi-Oh world. Furthermore, if I'm able to save myself some time, I would actually like to try and play other video games. I want to play games such as For Honor and get into that properly. I will be streaming Horizon Zero Dawn this weekend and hopefully playing games such as The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in the near future. At the moment, my schedule is unconfirmed and will be determined in the near future, but for the time being, if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing and when I'm streaming, hit, feel free to add me at Twitch on twitch.tv slash the Arnold Twitch or on my Twitter account uh, at the Arnold Suite to see when I'm streaming and making announcements. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this update and hopefully you enjoy the episode. Hey everyone, my name is Sean Arnold and welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Online Ranked Jewels. From today and for the next couple of days, I'm going to be uploading videos of which I recorded while testing out my Buster Blader deck. Thank you to all those who saw the original Buster Blader video and gave me uh, feedback on what they thought my original build. It seemed to be well received and I'm glad people liked it. And one comment uh, and one user asked, um, how well does this deck do against Masked Heroes? And I said, I actually have a duel of myself playing against Masked Heroes and so I thought I'll put that one up first. And uh, but before we do, I do need to apologize for the end of this video. Part of the last turn or so did get cut off. I have no idea why that happened. It's been happening a lot recently to me with PS4 share. And this was actually going to be one of the main videos or was going to be the episode I was going to upload first about Buster Blader because um, I was at a point with this deck where I was like, yeah, I'm happy with the build. The build seems to work. I'm happy with how it's playing. And then... Um, I started doing a bit more testing after it and I was like, no, do you know what? I'm actually not happy with the build. I want to change a lot of it. And I think this duel is what made me want to change a lot of it. So on my opponent's first turn, he's managed to summon that Mars Hero Dark Law. Mars Hero Dark Law is an incredibly good Mars Hero monster. He has only 2400 attack, but its effect really makes up for its weak stats. And that is, um, well, it has several effects. Um, the first is if I ever search out a card or if I draw a card, from my deck to my hand outside of my draw phase he gets to banish one card from my hand at random which can really really hurt a combo deck like Buster Blader. Also any card that is sent to my graveyard will be banished which is really really bad also because I need my graveyard in order to perform successfully. So uh, playing against Mars Heroes can be really really bad for a deck like this um, because you really want access to both your hand and graveyard and this puts a lot of pressure on you. So as you see here now Illusion CXI is uh, playing Miracle Fusion and he's going to banish the Shadow Mist in his graveyard and the Elemental Hero Ocean from his field and he's going to now special summon out Elemental Hero Absolute Zero, another good Elemental Hero monster. This monster when uh, removed from the field will destroy all monsters on the field. It's, um, it's, it, it, it's a really really good first turn, it's quite solid. Um, He's got something that's going to control the graveyard, he's got something that's going to control the hand. And if I find a way to get over his monsters, he's going to destroy all monsters on the field. So, uh, yeah, this isn't the best of hands and best of situations here. And this kind of setup is enough to make some people just rage quit and uh, scoop on their first turn. But I said, I want to play it out. I want to see, how, can I overcome this? Can I get through this? And so what I'm going to do here on the first turn is I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to play it slow. And I'm going to set one card face down. And I'm going to set... Uh, I'm trying to decide whether to either maybe play a Lure of Darkness and start drawing from my deck or um, really just try to consider what I can do here. Uh, what I really need to do and what I added to my deck is if 
find a card like Dark Hole or Raigeki to get rid of his monsters. And so now in my current build, I actually run three copies of um, Twin, Twin Twister for back row and um, two copies of Dark Hole and one copy of Raigeki. It seems like in the current TCG format, um, Mash Removal is really, really popular. I was watching a YCS tournament for YCS Atlanta. Uh, last night and um, it seems like a lot of people are playing cards like Needle Ceiling, Torrential Tribute and similar cards which can destroy a whole board at once because of the current format and um, the current format has a lot of monsters which swarm the field such as um, Metal Foes and uh, Zodiacs as well. So um, I sit down King Cabillo, I'm not even too sure why I sit down King Cabillo, I think I wanted just to save, um, I wanted to save my other cards in my hand. I think maybe I should have played the Lure of Darkness and drawn into my deck, but um, that was really, I really have my back against the wall in this situation here. It's not a really good situation to be in. Uh, fortunately, I draw into Buster Welt, which can help a little bit, but isn't too great. And uh, now I really wish I had played the Lure of Darkness. And um, yeah, no, I've, um, now not only do I have to worry about his monsters, I have to worry about his face down cards too. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to make something happen here, but I do need to make a move. So there is one play which I am considering and um, you know it comes to a point where I just say to myself do you know what fuck it just just do something you know do um, anything just to get over it and um, we'll see if I actually do something maybe today maybe tomorrow who knows I might just spend a long time thinking about it who knows but um, this deck has been a lot of fun um, I really enjoy playing Buster Blader Buster Blader is just such a blast to play I feel like I have the best build out there on the internet um, at least for this format and um, no I'm very very happy with the way it turned out so what I'm going to do in this turn here is I'm going to play Buster Welp and I'm going to search out Destruction Swordsman Fusion now the reason why I was hesitating for so long is because I didn't want to send Buster Welp to the graveyard but I think this is it, it's what's going to have to happen it's something I'm going to have to do whether I want to get out of this situation or not so I'm going to activate Buster Welp's effect I'm going to tribute it it's going to go to the banished power unfortunately but at least I'll be able to summon that Buster Blader to the field. And Buster Blader will come from my hand. And he's got 2600 attack points. Now what I really want to do right now is I really want to get rid of Dark Lore. If I can get rid of Dark Lore, I'd be pretty happy because then I can start using my graveyard again. And then I can start searching. Oh, that's why I didn't play Allure of Darkness. I didn't play Allure of Darkness because I was afraid that it'll, um, Buster Blader, not Buster Blader, but Dark Lore will be able to banish a card from my hand. So, upon the attack, my opponent chains with Book of Moon, so I'm going to respond in kind with Destruction and Swordsman Fusion. This is going to require me to send Buster Blader and um, Flamvel Guard to my graveyard, well, well, really to the Banish Pile, to summon out um, Buster Blader, the Majestic, is it Majestic? No, the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman, my boss monster for this deck. Now, um... In this build, um, you're going to see a few cards, you're, you've already seen a few cards which I'm running, that I didn't run in my, in the last video, um, this was like before I put up that video, and one of those cards was Flamfell Guard, because I was running three copies of Cards of Consonants, and like I said in the deck, uh, the deck build for that video, I don't actually feel like, um, Cards of Consonants work too well in this deck, because I didn't really want to send my Dragon Buster and my Buster Whelp to the graveyard. So I actually took it out and reduced it down to one copy and took out Flamville Guard. But I used to just run Flamville Guard in there as fodder for that and also as a level 1 tuner to do some shenanigans and for its high defence. It's um it was okay, but um it didn't help me really accelerate my place. It really just made um it added a little bit of consistency to the deck, but only if you drew into Castle Constants and Flamville Guard at the same time. So it wasn't really that big of a help. So uh, fortunately I managed to get rid of Dark Lord, which is great because I can open up my graveyard again. And I can start making some plays, hopefully. My opponent doesn't respond with anything, so um, that's pretty nice. And I managed to draw into another copy of Buster Whelp. Um, I'm going to, at this point now, try and use a little of Darkness to start digging through my deck. So I'm going to play Buster Whelp, and I'm going to search my deck for Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. Uh, a little bit of trivia for you guys. Did you guys know that um, the card features on... Uh, the whelps and um, the dragon buster weapons they're not actually the monster it's actually the weapon that um, is the difference between them from robot buster and wizard buster and dragon buster those cards are um, those cards um, it's all about the weapon it's the same monster it's still buster whelp but it's um, different um, it's a uh, what was I trying to say it's different it's the different weapon that matters on those so it's kind of like um, you're equipping a different weapon but the monster is giving it to you 
So what I'm now going to do here is I'm thinking to myself, uh, I'm in a bit of a rough situation because Absolute Zero can destroy all monsters on the field. And so I'm going to play out this monster here, Xiao Feng, Phantom of the Yang Xing. I, was running, I used to actually run some more level 9 monsters in this deck because it isn't too hard to go into a level 9 Synchro in this deck. Also because of Formula Synchron, I thought maybe I'd try doing level 9s because I could do a 2 plus a 7 for a, um, a Synchron. Now the reason why I went for Xiao Feng is Xiao Feng has a whole lot of effects which I can't use but there is one which I can use and that is when it is destroyed um, when it is destroyed uh, once it's been synchro summoned um, I can search my deck for a tuna monster which is great because I have loads and loads of tuna monsters in my deck and that is really really useful so now I'm going to go into my main phase 2 and now I'm going to play cards of consonants with Flamfell Guard in order to start to run a few more cards now, unfortunately, I think this is about where the video is about to end. Um, this I, this term will get cut off very, very shortly. Um, I can't really tell you what happened. I, I know I managed to win this game. Uh, I was just able to set up a better board than my opponent. I think I was able to get Dragon Buster onto the field along with um, Stardust Spark Dragon and um, Buster Blader. And uh, my opponent just didn't have as good of a board as I did. And so, yeah, no, that kind of worked out in my favour. But, um, yeah, to answer the question of how well does it, that, this stack does against um, Mars Heroes, it does fine. It does really, really good. Um, just like any other deck that's facing Mars Heroes, if you can get rid of their board, then um, you can uh, you can really capitalise over them. Mars Heroes are um, very, very front and loaded, and if you get past their off initial offence, you can win. Thank you for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you soon. Take care.